I am Robert Charles Joseph Emile Jacquino de Bézange and I was born on March 15, 1878 to François Eugénie Emile Jacquino and Lesbi Marie Emma Joséphine Gott of the aristocratic Jacquino de Bézange family. My place of birth was the town of Saint in the Charente Maritime department of Western France. At 16 years old, in September 1894, I was sent to St. Marie College in Canterbury, England, to follow a Jesuit formation with other sions of the noble families of France. In 1909, at 31 years of age, I was ordained as a priest in Hastings, East Sussex. I left France for my first missionary assignment in Shanghai five years later. This was not long after the death of my elderly and ailing mother, and just three weeks before the start of the First World War, on August 4th, 1914. Soon after arriving in Shanghai, I had enrolled for full-time Chinese language training. I began my missionary work as a language teacher in Zinkawe, a Jesuit settlement outside of the southwest part of the French concession. I also taught in the Jesuit-run Université L'Aurore from 1913 to 1921, where I'd lost my right arm to an explosion while conducting chemistry experiments. From 1914 to 1934, I became known as Father Rao Jiaoju, the parish priest for 7,000 Chinese Christian and vicar of the Church of the Sacred Heart of Hong Kong. In 1927, during the clash of the Communist and the Kuomintang, the fighting at Sumter on Industrial Sabe and near the North Railway Station, the Holy Family Convent on North Hongnan Road was surrounded by blazing buildings and isolated in the firefight. On March 22nd and 23rd that year, I negotiated a ceasefire to allow a safe passage from the convent to evacuate 150 Chinese orphan children, of which 37 were babies and 400 nuns, to St. Joseph Orphanage Institute in Nanshu. In the winter, of 1931-1932. The Japanese Third Fleet crushed the area of Tsabe under a rain of fire, shells and bombs. As many as 10,000 to 20,000 civilians lost their lives. During these few months of battle, there were probably more civilian casualties than the military ones. Serving as senior chaplain in the Shanghai Volunteer Corps, with the support of Major Francis Eli Bell and as president of the China International Famine Relief Commission, I negotiated a four-hour truce between the Chinese Army and Vice Admiral Nomura Kishizaburo to allow the evacuation of trapped civilian in Tsabe. Major Ailey Bell and I, waving a white flag, led a convoy of six trucks, rescuing at least 2,000 civilians, mostly women and children.
in 1934. I left my parish in Hong Kong and became vicar of a new parish, St. Peter Church, which was constructed on the ground of Aurora University in the French concession by French architect Léonard and Vesser. On August 9, 1937, the Battle of Shanghai finally broke out. The Chinese nationalist government decided to make Shanghai an example of the resistance of Chinese troops. With foreign nations and international press as witnesses. Needless to say, it was a disastrous strategy that only brought unnecessary suffering to civilians as the battle was fought for three months on unintended targets, creating complete chaos in the city. In the past, and even during First World War, Battles were fought mostly outside major urban areas. This was the first time a metropolis with 3.5 million people experienced modern warfare. Chinese and Japanese planes flew over the city with no care for the foreign settlement or areas of refugee. Twice Chinese planes had accidentally or not dropped bombs in the city, injuring thousands of civilians. Within a few days, hundreds of thousands of refugees from the Sabei, Hongko and Yangshupu district sought refuge in foreign settlement. Refugees were to be found on nearly every street, alley or doorway. Until now, Shanghai lives under a Pax Occidentalis, thanks to the presence of the heavily guarded foreign settlements. Since the Taiping Rebellion in the 1850s and 60s, Shanghai has become a shelter for refugees, with thousands of Chinese seeking peace and safety in the foreign settlements. The French authorities took as many refugees as they could. The Shanghai Municipal Council policy was not to get involved with refugees, and their only concern was the safety of the international settlement locking the gates of the concession. On August 18, 1937, I created the International Refugee Committee, headquarter at 43 Boulevard de Montigny, to coordinate the diverse relief organizations. Our initial task was to set up refugee camps and keep them supplied. By August 21st, there were a total of 60 refugee camps, housing 50,000 refugees. By October, 110 camps housed 70,070 refugees. And by November 1937, 142 camps amongst all foreign settlements were accommodating 91,815 refugees. Together with three French, two English, one Norwegian and one American we established the Nanshe Supervisory Committee. The International Refugee Committee continued centralizing most the refugees in one area 
outside of the foreign settlements and introducing and maintaining standards for food, health and housing. We also endeavor to administer preventive health care through vaccination against the most prevalent disease such as cholera and smallpox. I went to the Japanese consulate together with Vice Admiral Le Bizeau to meet with Consul General Okamoto Suemaza and Admiral Azegawa Kiyoshi, commander of the Japanese Third Fleet, to discuss the refugee problem. This is what I told them. I think that Japan is more than willing to minimize damage to non-combatant Chinese. Let's create a safe zone in Nanshe, not a neutral zone. It's neither meant to be neutral nor a zone. It is not rightfully called a demilitarized region. It is certainly not arranged for the French interest, nor to protect the church property in Nanshe. It's purely and simply a district of safety for non-combatants. I'm sure we can work this out amicably since both you, Consul General Okamoto Zuemaza, and you, Azegawa Kiyoshi, together with the Chinese, desire for humanitarian reasons to protect the non-combatants. I also went to see the mayor, Yu Hongxun, of Greater Shanghai, to tell him that the area in question would be restricted to an enclosure adjacent to the French concession from Mingguo Road to Feng Bang Road. The safe zone opened formally at 5 p.m. on November 9, 1937, with its boundaries marked by Red Cross flags. I sought the sworn word of the Japanese consul and vice admiral that as long as no Chinese soldiers were under this zone and its occupants behaved according to the satisfaction of the Japanese authorities, the area would be marked as a safe zone, free from attack from Japanese force. And they both agreed. I got the financial support of Mayor Yu, who gave 50,000 yuan and 10,000 yen from the Japanese General Matsui. The Japanese Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hirota Koki, even congratulated me for my humanitarian task. By late November, the safety zone housed 250,000 refugees, most of which had crowded in from other parts of Nanshu. By December 1937, some 375,000 refugees had been evacuated from the city to their home province. But up to 700,000 still remained in the city, of which 140,000 were formed in 160 camps and 250,000 in the safety zone. 